Human beings have been performing computations for thousands of years, from tally sticks to Stonehenge to the portable and still employable abacus. The history of computing includes punch cards, tabulators, and desktop calculators, all leading to Alan Turing's influence on computer science with his mind-bending algorithms and miraculous program storing machine. In the mid-20th century, computers went commercial, developed by companies like Univac, Burroughs, NCR, Control Data, Honeywell, and IBM. This consortium produced large, customized, and expensive computer systems for government agencies and corporations. A new age in human computational history was about to dawn. In the 1960s, the status quo experienced a radical transformation. New ideas were forming as cultural, political, and social traditions came under question. The same can be said for the world of business computing. Generally considered the first modern mainframe, IBM's 360 reinvented business computing and delivered the technological firepower that allowed NASA's rocket scientists to look into the sky and say, hey gravity, let's go for a ride. The first thing that came to mind when I think about what impact the mainframe has had on business over the last 45 years or so was in fact the U.S. space program because the mainframes uh, provided that compute solution that actually enabled us to put a man on the moon in the 60s. Life is fear and loyalty to the corporation, that's the best of all. Our leaders we revere and why we're here, let's show the world just what we think of Let's world. sing, man, so let us sing, man, sing, man, once or twice and sing again, forever onward IBM. Perhaps the biggest contribution was in the area of real-time transaction processing because that's what really led the way to, for example, credit card authorization systems, airline reservation systems, things that we kind of take for granted today that you could just walk up to somebody and they can immediately answer a question or, or transact business with you. All of that's driven by this real-time transaction processing which was pioneered on the mainframe. When you look back in the 60s, we were really experiencing a lot of technological problems that looking back it's hard to visualize now. Most computers were custom built. Uh, one of the great examples of this is Sabre, which was a custom built IBM mainframe designed just for American Airlines to run a reservation system. There was an awful lot of this. And so you'd have slight variations of the machines. IBM made the decision to have a compatible family of systems that could be used for any business purpose. So to that goal, IBM started developing in 1960 the System 360 line as a, what we would now call, a heterogeneous line of computers. So it would dramatically reduce the cost of developing these systems. When I started uh, working with computers, uh, a lot of work was done through batch. At the time, it was a great jump forward because it automated something that had previously been done by hand. But businesses realized that they needed to be more responsive in this. They wanted to go what we now call online. They wanted to be able to do things in real time. So within IBM, uh, we created TSO for interactive users. We created IMS and CICS for uh, transactional users. These environments, particularly uh, CICS, are still very heavily used because they provide the backup, the security, or they provide mechanisms for doing all the attributes that business applications need and all the customer has to worry about is writing the business logic part of it. The mainframe itself was the, the outgrowth of a culture of, of responsible computing and that came together with an architecture that was built around the needs of business but also a culture of scrupulousness, of care, of, of uh, doing things that were looking to the future, hence the promise that IBM made when they put out the, the announcement for the mainframe on April 7, 1964, that whatever you wrote uh, for their mainframe then would continue to run into the future, and that's a, a promise that's being kept. The ability to run, you know, it's a terrible word, legacy workloads, right? So it's not like, you know, in Windows when you upgrade from Windows 6 to Windows 7 or Windows 7 to whatever, whatever's going to come next, half your applications stop working and you have to go buy the next one or if they're your applications, you have to figure out what to recode. You know, that COBOL program that you wrote, you know, 30 years ago, continues to run exactly the same way as it did. You know, our customers do like to test everything every year. To some extent, they're surprised that the stuff continues to run because of the sort of the rules of engagement that IBM and the ISVs put around the mainframe, which was uh, to make sure that it was the ultimate investment protection platform. 
in all the years that I've been involved at a mainframe, I'm not sorry I chose that path. I'm not sorry now, you know, where, yeah, we used to have a, a data center that was, you know, five million square feet. Okay, now the data center is, you know, maybe 500 square feet, but it doesn't matter. The power is 500 times of what it was. Uh, it's considerably easy to manage. Um, I mean, if you just look at the cabling, in the old days, you know, where you had bus and table cabling that looked like a fire hose, and now you got a piece of wire that looks like a, a telephone uh, jack in a wall, makes life a whole lot easier. If you talk to people who have been working on this platform for longer than I've been alive, they'll tell you that it's their platform, right? That IBM is just a custodian of the platform, and the CA is a custodian of the platform that you know, they're the ones who in the 60s were picking the little cores up off the floor and making sure that the IBM CE did the right stuff. That's really why it is where it is. It is the community and the fact that there's um, a great deal of feeling of responsibility on all parts, right? The customers feel a great deal of responsibility to the platform. IBM clearly feels a great deal of responsibility, as do the ISVs. The remarkable change that defined the 1960s was echoed in the world of business computing and would help lay the foundation for the aggressive business expansion poised to unfurl in the coming decade. The computational engine that would help drive a significant amount of that growth? You guessed it, the mainframe.